Hey guys, welcome to Priceless B Movies. I'm your host, Colin Price. As most of you know out there, if you watch my videos on a regular basis, I am a major horror movie fan. It's by far my favorite genre, but you know what I also love? Comic book movies. Not necessarily superhero movies, but comic book movies in general. Especially when they're not afraid to push the envelope. Movies like Sin City, movies like Watchmen, movies like The Dark Knight. Movies where they kind of step outside the box and go, you know what, this doesn't have to be for little fucking kids. So of course, I have to do a review for this amazing movie, Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds plays Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Deadpool, and, uh, you know, he's the merc with the mouth. He's dishonorably discharged, and he basically makes a living taking bounties. Not necessarily killing people, but just kind of roughing people up who do stuff they shouldn't, you know. He's kind of like Sonny Chiba in the old Street Fighter movies. He's a bad guy who gets paid to fuck up worse guys. Pretty early on in the film, uh, Wilson meets his love interest, played by Monica Baccarin from uh, Firefly and from Gotham, and the two of them immediately hit it off, and there's this great sex, uh, sex scene montage that I won't go into, but it is absolutely hilarious. And uh, before too long, these two are just head over heels for each other, and uh, he proposes, and they're set to be married, and then he very quickly and very unexpectedly develops some very serious forms of cancer. Turns out there's hope, though. There's this program that's being run by these shady military guys, and they say that uh, they have developed a way to not only cure his cancer, but to give him superhero abilities. And he takes this as, like, his only shot at getting better and living a life with the woman he loves, so he goes and he uh, volunteers himself for this program. The program is overseen by uh, Ed Skrine. Screen, screen, something along those lines. Anyway, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his name, but uh, basically his character is uh, Ajax, and Ajax is a mutant, and he basically tells Wade Wilson, he goes, "Well, here's the thing, we can cure you, but we basically have to torture you nearly to death to do it." He says, oh, "We're going to give you this serum, but uh, it has to be activated by extreme stress." So basically, Ajax tortures Wade Wilson for several days. Now, as messed up as the experiment sounds, it does work, and Wilson develops this superhuman healing ability. He can basically, you can do anything to him, and he won't die. He'll grow limbs back. He'll seal wounds. You know, you cannot hurt the man for very long. Wilson's pissed, though, because what's also happened is this, is this experiment has completely deformed his whole body. He basically looks like Freddy Krueger, and now uh, he's got it in for the doctor. He wants to kill the doctor for basically messing him up, but he also hopes to get his girlfriend back, but he's afraid, obviously, that she'll reject him because of now how he appears. He becomes Deadpool and hides behind the mask so that he can you know, get at the people he wants revenge on, but also so that no one has to look at him. Take away his appearance, though, and you're basically left with his mannerisms, which means that, at least to me when I was watching the movie, that now his attitude is a little worse, now his sense of humor is a little more demented. He is more or less the same guy, but it's just things have been accentuated. But I think because people can't see him, you know, he has to put out his attitude a little bit more. So he becomes this wise-ass not quite superhero. This is a very entertaining movie. It is exactly what I wanted from a Deadpool movie. In fact, I liked this movie more than I thought I would. And I knew I was going to like it, but I didn't know too much about Deadpool before I saw it. I've never read too many of the Deadpool comics. You know, I, I only kind of know of him. Basically, whatever it says on Wikipedia, that's what I knew about Deadpool before I saw the movie. I'm glad I did, though, because normally I don't like to watch comic book movies if I don't know the source material very well, but this movie had me laughing harder than any movie I can think of in the last couple of years. There were a couple times I was sitting in the theater in physical agony from laughing so hard at some of the crap that Deadpool does and that he himself has to go through. Ryan Reynolds is a standout in this movie. This is by far the best thing I've ever seen him in. This It's not so much that he's required to stretch as an actor in this, but it's just that the role is tailor-made for him. I can't see anyone else playing this character now. Everyone else is pretty good in the supporting cast. Um, Monica Baccarin is very good. Um, even though she has very little to do, I think that Gina Carano is very good as Angel Dust. You know, she's, I actually thought that she was a more interesting villain than the main villain of the movie was, even though she had a lot less to do. Maybe it's just that thing, like you, the henchman is always... Kind of like in old Bond movies where the henchman was always more interesting to watch than the main villain was. 
I don't know. Maybe people will disagree with me on that. Also, even though I can't think of their names right now, the actor and actress who play Colossus and uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, respectively, are also very good. What I love about this movie is that um, I was so worried that this was going to be Deadpool's movie in the sense that he was the only one who was allowed to be funny, and he was the only one who was, you know, no one else was going to really matter. But this movie does a very great job at giving so many great lines to the supporting characters. Everyone is allowed to be just as funny and just as interesting as Deadpool is, so you're never bored for any part of this movie. The only complaint that I do have is the main villain. I think that the weakness in most Marvel films, whether it's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe or not, is that their villains are pretty one-dimensional. The villain in this basically is just there to be the bad guy. I can't tell you anything about his personality or his backstory or anything from watching the movie. He's not allowed to have a full character. And that's the one thing that I didn't really like about Deadpool is the villain. This is an incredibly funny movie, though, as I said. Just please, for the love of God, do not take kids to this. This is not meant for children. And what cracked me up a couple months ago when everyone was like, oh, well, they should release a PG-13 version of this film for kids. I can tell you right now that this film never had a chance. If you edited this to a PG-13, it would be about six minutes long and make absolutely no sense. This is an R-rated movie in every sense of that word. So, just, you know know what it is. This is closer to Kick-Ass than it is to the Avengers, and if you don't understand that before you go in, you're probably going to be pretty pissed about it. This is not a kid's movie. This is not a family-friendly Avengers piece of crap off of the assembly line. This is a grown-up movie, so just bear that in mind as you watch it. Deadpool gets three and a half stars, almost four. This is almost a perfect movie, but like I said, I can't get around the fact that it has such a weak bad guy. It's the only thing that really kills this movie for me. But I think that three and a half stars is a pretty good... I can't think of too many comic book movies in the last couple years that I would give that high a rating to. That's my review for Deadpool. You should totally check it out. And you know what? I think that I'm going to make this a more regular thing. Like at least once a month or once every couple of months when I go to the theater and see a movie that's newer and and I have a lot to say about it, that I'm going to start doing those not as frequently as reviewing the older movies and the B-movies, but, you know, just kind of mixing it up a little bit, because I find that I have a lot to say whenever I see any movie, and while I love talking about the older films, I do want to try to stay up to date with what's going on in the current world of cinema, just as any other critic would. Also, and as always, if there's a movie you can think of that's overlooked or underappreciated by mainstream audiences or critics or both, and you'd like to know what I think about it, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see what I can do about finding a copy of that movie and putting a review up for you. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more Priceless B-movies.